What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Helgar's Hole. In the previous episode, we had had both a pandemic and a fire that really put... It put us in a rough spot. I mean, I really felt as though we were up on the rack there for a little bit. So aside from people being sick, the benefits. So let's talk about the positives of the situation. On the front hand, these people get to renovate their homes, so that's like a positive. I give them all the building materials anyway, so it's not like they had to earn their home or anything. Over here, we have a doctor's office built, which is going to help us out. All of our supplies are looking pretty well-rounded at the moment. I think I would like to lock down a better supply of stone. I have everybody building right now, so everybody is being a builder at the moment, just so you have a general idea. And I'm going to go ahead and knock off the remaining. Now they've rebuilt all of the houses, and everybody has a place to go and a place to be. We're going to see a huge number of supplies drop off. That's going to be a problem we're going to see as well. So, we're still in the cold season. Hopefully people can get their firewood. Nobody died from the situation, strangely enough. Like, we had a giant pandemic. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a herdsman. We also got sheep over here. And so hopefully these sheep will get it on. We'll have like a little bit of a situation. And like, these sheep will definitely be feeling the berry white. Or at least like, we'll get like a berry manilow CD or something over here. Just in case berry white like isn't their thing. And so, once music is in the air, hopefully these sheep will breed. Unfortunately, if we got two male sheep, they can entertain themselves however they see fit. But, that's not going to help us, like, have more sheep. And so, hopefully we got a male and a female. If we got a female and a female, and a male and a male, well, that sort of limits off their options in order for their recreational time. Kind of prison mode, I suppose. Unless they're predisposed to that kind of action anyways. In which case, have fun with it. Do yo thing. But in any case... We've got stuff to do. So in this episode, I've got more than enough people iron mining. So I feel like we've still got people missing houses, weirdly enough. Let's go ahead and build a few more houses then. I should probably build houses down in here for all of these people too. Send up to walk as far. Let's do that. Let's put in a house there. Like two houses. Put two more houses over here too. And then what we learned in the previous episode is that if you put houses, the weird thing is if you have a fireplace in your house, like an object that emits fire, and then you build your house out of wood, this strange scientific thing along the lines of like combustion happens. And so, as luck would have it, building your house out of wood actually makes them pretty susceptible to burning down. I never would have thought it. So in any case, we need to start kind of putting wells around a little bit better. And so we're going to put a well right here. I must start putting wells all over town, because after seeing how much damage that potential fire did, it makes me very, very worried about the future efficiency of all of my little scattered areas where we work. So obviously we probably need one down here too, just to make sure. Over here, I don't really think there's too much of a problem. Let me see how he's doing. How have you been doing this season? So you fished for a log? What? How did you catch a log? Like, did, was that in your book of stereotypical things to fish? I would expect a boot or like a tin can, but really, along the lines of colloquial things you fished out of the ocean, a log? Really? <laughs> All right, well, that must have been a pretty strong fishing line if you've got a log out of there. I mean, I've pulled back strings, and I am a terrible fisherman, by the way, just to let you know. I'm too noisy. I start sitting there, and I'm like, you know what this fishing excursion needs? It needs music. And so next thing you know, I'm bumping the bass out there. I'm like dancing with my fishing pole. I'm getting all excited. I'm getting my club on like in the middle of the forest. All the hunters and everything are just like angry at me. They're just like, oh my god, who is this kid out here in the middle like dancing with a fishing pole? Like thinking he's going to catch something. It doesn't matter. I have a good time. I keep it real when I'm out in the field. You got to do what you got to do. In any case, that's really the reason why I'm not good at hunting or anything else. Plus, I don't like killing stuff. I just, I don't enjoy killing things. It's a weird, I don't know. I... If I had to in order to survive, I'd be happy with it. But in general, I always feel like I'm just like killing things for killing things in nature. Like the few times that I've ever gone hunting, I've thankfully never been able to... Ooh, steel tools. These 25 of them. Well, the few times that I've gone out hunting... I don't really want steel tools right now. We'll deal with that later. The few times I've gone out hunting, I'll continue my story. I've never actually like shot anything. I've caught fish. Loads and loads of fish. I've gone hunting once or twice. Never shot anything. And I really, I don't know, I don't really care if people go hunting. Obviously, in California, we have a huge problem with, like, deer being overpopulated. Like, in the south, I know they have a problem with boars being overpopulated, which is a double problem because boars become really, really aggressive. And if you really want to see, like, an animal that will truly just kind of make a mess of everything, it's a boar. And they're resilient, too. They're tough to kill. That is an animal that really just refuses to die. Really kind of a, a sheer, if nothing else, it's really kind of a 
a wonderful exhibition of how well animals evolve to suit their needs. I mean, it's really kind of an indestructible critter. So anyways, getting off my geological, paleontological soapbox here, talking about the things familiar to me, such as evolutionary history and things of that nature that tend to entertain me in my hours of twilight. I don't want his steel tools. What do we want to do in the game? So let's get back on the subject of the game. I mean, seriously, I think we're missing houses right now. And I, I really think that that could be remedied in a lot of respects. I think we need to also have more fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and up my log limit and also my fuel limit to adjust to the demands of the society that we're growing. I think the real problem that we're running into right now while we're running out of fuel every single winter is that we've just got enough people at this point to where they're depleting whatever it is that we have. And so every now and again we just have like this giant rush of like things that disappear from the stockpile, especially given the the human, I mean, it's really kind of a nice showing of the human nature that they've instilled with the AI here, where I think in these situations you would find people just stockpiling like crazy, just acting a fool, taking as much as they can, not caring if their neighbor starves. I like to think better of the human race, but deep down I think I know the truth. I, I, that's, it's, it is what it is, my friends, it is what it is. Survival is a hell of a thing. I've never been in that situation, so it's very, very difficult to even gather the stones to throw at someone who would be put in that situation. So I think it's best in a lot of those cases that you just kind of move on. Keep your mouth shut about it, and then just kind of just be like, I don't know, man. I've never been there. We have a lot of idle people right now, and so I'm going to put some of them into building because we have a lot of building projects going on that just simply aren't getting done. We have people living out in the rain right now, and... In keeping with our work to live, live to work mantra, which I I didn't get to that point in the other series either. So Diggler's Dive <laughs> adopted like this saying, and I, I had a bunch of these signs come in that said work to live, live to work. And that was really kind of the goal here. And so I think here we're going to say till the earth or fertilize it. That's going to be, <laughs> that's awful. That's going to be the overall moral of our city. Like till the earth, like work to till the earth or work to fertilize it. You can be fertilizer or you can be a farmer. So I'm going to give them the choice first. And we got to keep peasants on their A-game without, like, tangible threats of really just knuckles upside the head. I do feel like our peasantry is really just not going to get anything done. So these houses down in here have been finished, which is very, very nice. I should probably also give them, like, a boulevard that runs through the forest. Or an avenue. So let's do that. Ah, uh, things aren't getting done because we're out of stone. I just noticed that. All right. Well, since we're out of stone, I think this little stone field up here will do nicely. Let's go ahead and get started on that. That's going to be like our next goal is really just kind of to get rid of some of this stone and some of this iron over here. We've got plenty of iron, but we definitely need stone, so we'll go with stone first. And we'll send some of the laborers. Luckily, we have a lot of laborers, so that job will get done pretty quickly. I was wondering why anytime there's a building queue error, I start dialoguing just kind of like to fill space, you know what I mean? And the unintentional side effect of all that is when I fill that space, I have the tendency... To really overlook little things that have been running around. So hopefully, I feel like we are doing a lot better in this playthrough of Banish than we did in the first one. The first one I had this terrible feeling that things were snowballing out of control. And that I just didn't have the time to dedicate in order to make it to work. And now, now I've had the time. That's right. I've had the time. So here we are building a successful civilization. And I think kind of not relying on farming is the big kind of difference between a successful society in this game and one that's really not so successful. Please tell me you didn't kill that sheep. Okay, good. Hey, they had a baby sheep. Fantastic. We landed with a male and a female. That makes me pretty stoked. They can only have eight sheeps in there. And so what that means is you set this threshold, and when it goes over that threshold, they kill the sheep off, and what they'll do is they'll collect the wool and the meat, and they'll take it to the nearest stockpile. This gentleman has chickens. Oh, my God. They are just really kind of tempting me with all of these lovely things that they're bringing in exchange for our tools. The chickens are going to cost 400 apiece. That's an expensive... That is an expensive batch of chickenry. So... We just need 100 tools in order to make that trade. And there it is. We could potentially have more. But I think we would be tapping out our tool stock. So anyways, let's go ahead and trade for the chickens. You do have this temporary storage space right here. We'll decide where we want the chickens to go in just a moment. I don't even know how much space a chicken takes up. 
I do love chicken though. That's one of the things I know about myself, like as a human being personally, is that I really enjoy chicken. Grilled, fried, whatever. Just as long as the chicken is in my mouth, I'm okay with it. We have broken tools up in the mine. As you can see, the mine over time kind of loses its efficiency. It kind of has a potential yield that eventually you're going to hit critical mass and not be able to mine anything anymore. What I do remember though... Oh, never mind. It has a total... I thought when you swapped from iron to coal, it refilled. I guess not. So in the future, why do we want... So one of the things you definitely want to think about here is like, why do we need coal? Coal allows us to make steel tools that last a lot longer and as a bonus are worth way, way more than all of the other ones. I mean, the steel tools, they sell at a better price. I think the steel tools are... Oh, never mind. That guy left. So the steel tools, I believe, are... You know what? Everybody build. I'm sick of staring at the building queue right now. Everybody do yo... Th Actually, no, never mind. That's that's a terrible idea. What am I thinking? Everybody do this over here because I've got you all doing it anyways as it stands right now. I think I've used up all my tools. So let's go ahead and unload all of the tool inventory. Yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to drop that back down. We're not going to have anything to trade for a little bit. Potentially, we could trade off sheep. Our excess sheep... We could use this for a little bit. Once it gets up to like the 7-8 region, we could start trading sheep for other things since it's kind of a, a cost for cost, especially since sheep are worth a lot of money. I mean, they're worth 600, I don't know, Kentucky nickels. That's what I'm going to name our currency, Kentucky nickels. It's one of our long-running currencies that I've always used when I'm out of anything else. I will trade you five Kentucky nickels for that turkey. I actually looked into... Oh, never mind. I'm not going to... I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just going to avoid it altogether. It looks like we're missing houses. Of course we are. Well, people should work faster. Maybe uh, work harder. I demand it. Work harder, suckers. We are going a long, long ways for stone. I think that I was really on the right track with that stone quarry, unfortunately. And I probably should have allocated my time a little bit better. So the stone quarry. It's going to cost me 40 stone to get the stone quarry done. Which is kind of a problem, because when you're out of stone, you're just, like, out of stone. Our food supply is actually dropping now, too. Which leads me to think it may be about the time to start farming. We may have rested on our laurels just long enough. Let's see here. He's providing a reasonable amount. All these guys still operating at peak efficiency at the moment. I mean, look at all the deer. This is really is like a land of plenty, if there ever was one. Are they out of stone over here? Oh, no, they just have nobody to build it. Well, if all the stone's in place, then we should find ourselves... At least getting a bit more stone now. A lot of this over here was not being utilized properly. And so we should see that kind of explode a bit. And if that doesn't work, we'll come down here and we'll grab the stone out of here. But at this point, we really need rock quarries, and I think we need farms. That's going to be the two things. I'm going to put a stone quarry maybe in, like, right here. Will it fit? Let's go ahead and see if we can... It will. Okay, so the stone quarry is going to be down here in this corner. we got to play Tetris a little bit with all this. So stone quarry is going to go in here. Dr. Mario, if that's what you prefer. That's one of my biggest childhood memories is my mom just sitting around playing Dr. Mario all day. Dr. Mario was a very... Dr. Mario and Tetris were strange addictions at my household as a kid. As in, they tended to occupy, definitely tended to occupy the NES space for quite a lot of the day. I don't think, we've got a few minutes left in the episode. God, I really just want to get that 40 stone together. Are you guys all done over here? You, okay, so they're already done. Let's, we're going to have to go even farther out because unfortunately, no, not that. I don't want that. I want this. There we are. Fantastic. And so we're just going to get the stone from over there. I realize that's a huge region to have to haul from, but everything's done building at the moment. And so if we can keep our population in check for the next little bit. The reserve of firewood is obviously always pretty low. That's why I increased their ability to gather because they were all sitting around being very, very idle at the moment. If firewood doesn't recover, we'll go back in and we'll make another wood chopper, probably up near this location since that's where we're getting a lot of our wood from. This stockpile, well, this stockpile is being okay too. I think it's just because it's not combined. It's giving me the impression that maybe we don't have enough wood flying around. And when your city doesn't have enough wood flying around, insert random wood joke. Insert obligatory wood joke. Oh, yes, indeed. It's here. We have them. We are well stocked. I try to back away from them when I can, but... Every now and again, you just let one fly. And with our extra laborers, almost all these guys are going to be going to work out in the stone fields here. And as I said, the stone fields are very dangerous. You have the opportunity to really go head-to-head, -head, really to do 
unruly battle with the forces of geology, and they will try and kill you. Believe me, geology's tried to kill me a couple times. I have stories. It's tried to kill me probably on four or five occasions. Geology is not a job that really, like, ensures that you're going to live a really long time. I think it's probably, like, a couple times a year you find out that, like, some random guy from some other college is, like, dead now. You're like, how'd that happen? You're like, uh, he was messing around in a mine he probably should have been messing around in. Like, yep. There it is. And the problem is that, like, there's all these mines, like, out in the middle of nowhere that technically nobody owns. Like, somebody holds the deed to these mines that are out in the middle of nowhere, but they're not secured or anything. Or, like, they were secured a hundred years ago and the wood has just rotted away so you can go and kind of mess around in these mines. And they're really sort of unsafe. I've heard stories of finding, like, sweating dynamite with, like, the nitroglycerin falling out of it. Just all kinds of, like, nerve-wracking things that they found down in these mines. I do wish there was a level or two, because if I could get rid of that, this would be a great space to... Ooh, we've got an another baby sheep. See, now now the natural process is kind of moving along. Now that we've got more sheep, I think inbreeding might be a problem. Like, we've got, like, cousins and brothers breeding with mothers and fathers and all kinds of weird stuff. Definitely, like, some inbred sheep over here who are definitely, like... Ding, 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 ding. Like, definitely got, like, some banjo music coming from over, like, in this region. I always wanted a banjo, by the way. It's one of those things that, like, after I finished playing the guitar, I was really like, I, I, I got a ukulele because, like, or an ukulele, as my relatives would call it. Sometimes I, like, I have this weird thing where you have to, like, say things properly. Like, when a part of your family is Hawaiian, you have to, like, say things properly, but then the other half, you're just like, eh, ukulele, whatever. And so, anyways, proper enunciation aside, one of my uncles is one of the last ukulele makers in Hawaii, actually. He's one of the few people that still goes out and cuts the trees, like, in the ceremonial fashion and all that, and then he goes back and makes ukuleles, and he was so nice as to gift my family with one of his really, really, I mean, it was, it was a very, very generous gift. He gave us one that he really didn't have to, and I sat around for a little bit learning how to play the ukulele, and it's, it's an instrument that's very near and dear to my heart. I do enjoy it. However, I think it's back in my hometown right now, so I haven't played the ukulele in a while. It's been a bit. In any case, it's like, my dog has fleas. You only have, like, you know, four strings. So once you've kind of translated the fact that, like, things aren't normally where they are on, like, a six-string guitar, for example, which has, like, the whole EAD thing going on. I digress. I digress. What is going on over here, gentlemen? I require a building. What are we low on? Is it firewood still? Oh, it's the reserve of food. Ah, yes. Alright, well, since the reserve of food is low... We're gonna have to make a call here. We've gotta make a decision before we have a die-off. I think the first makeshift plan that's probably a good way to go is another fisherman right here. I think that's a reasonably decent call for kind of our QDOS solution right here. Or our QDFS, I don't know, our QDFS, quick and dirty fishing solution, or quick and dirty food solution system or something, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with an acronym right now and it's just not working with me. I think it's because my brain is all turd out. All nice and turd out. I think I'm going to take a road right now. Run it up along the side, make it look all nice and fancy schmancy. And the second we get that up and running, this is going to be about another five, another thousand food per season. So we've got laborers there. And I don't want to be adaptive in this game. That's really one of the big things that I do want to mention is being adaptive in this game. I'm going to go with eight workers right there to leave myself with a couple of laborers. And if they're still chiseling away at all this over here, it's time to step away because obviously we've got our supply taken care of. What they'll do is they'll just take this wood out here and they'll stack it along the sides and other people will come along eventually and just kind of grab what they need. I don't know if it's worth the effort. I was thinking about putting another logging operation, another logging food operation and herbal operation over here. I don't really know if it's worth the effort though. Kind of thinking about locations where stockpiles might go, like really where I can take stock of the things that I have. And in the current season, they've got two logs and a stone. That's that's all right. Four stones, I guess. I don't want to, I don't want to undervalue their talents. In any case, he should help out a lot. He's already at like a hundred food. Okay, good. How's his production going? He's producing about a thousand per season. He's producing hopefully about a thousand per season. I could put another one down here if I need to, and just connect them with roads. Make sure that we're really kind of fishing out this area. I think I may be able to also fit fisheries. Oh, there's enough water. I don't know if the water is contained like, but like, are you more efficient as a fisherman 
based on how much of your circle is occupied by water? Like, would this be really sort of the pan-ultimate situation for placement? Like, really kind of in the middle of a lake on an island would be your best fishing dock? I'm willing to bet that's probably how it works is how much of this is water is going to determine the efficiency, but it's not something that I'm educated on. So please, by all means, if you have, by all means, if you have a way to elucidate me on that subject or educate me, I will digress to your magnanimous and also sovereign opinion. I'm going to build a schoolyard finally. We're going to start educating because I feel like increasing the efficiency of all of my workers is something that now that we've got a lot of our situations taken care of is going to be a good plan. I'm also going to run the roads out here. I'm going to do my diatribe as I run these roads. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Banished by Shining Rock Software. This is a game near and dear to my heart that I've enjoyed very, very much. It's not one that I wanted to just kind of up and quit. And so I am ultimately, like, really glad that we've decided to continue along and just kind of do our thing. A road right there, and I'm going to put a farm there, a farm there. We have the extra hands available, so we may as well do it. I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, salutations from Helgar's Hole.